So we're here with Baroness Shirley Williams in what is the first in a hopefully a long, long series of video content for the new Oxford Union website. And in what we hope will become a tradition, we're going to ask all of the leading lights that come to the Oxford Union a handful of questions and hear their viewpoints on them. So Baroness Williams, thank you so much for speaking to us this Thanks evening. Thank you, one of your players. <laughs> it's fantastic. I just wanted to start with a particularly topical question. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're looking for reasonably short, short answers, um, brief answers. But do you think that the opportunity for electoral reform has been lost for a generation? No. Uh, my view is it won't come through a referendum. I think it will come through the gradual erosion of the case for first past the post. We're already seeing it's got largely gone in Scotland. It's going in Wales. It's going in some parts of the local government. It, it, it never has been part of the European Parliament. In fact, what I think is happening more and more is that the Westminster system is beginning to look outdated, obsolete. I think it'll take about 10 years, certainly not 20. And the second of three questions, what is your proudest achievement as a politician? Comprehensive schools. <laughs> not chance. You can, you can <laughs> shake up that a bit. But I'll tell you why in a, in a few words. People forget, you know, they, they almost always forget that the 11 plus, which is the system we used to have, which produced about one-fifth of young men and women who went on to grammar school and four-fifths who went to secondary modern school and most secondary modern schools had no A-level classes or O-level classes at all which just meant you hit the glass ceiling when you were 11 and it was a very thick glass ceiling. What comprehensive education has done is to give all that group of people at least a chance to take the necessary exams that lead on to higher education, university, vocational education and so on. As a result of that, we have a much more qualified country than we had when the London Plus was in existence. And finally, there's not just, you know, just to speculate, you can look at the reality. The county which has stuck rigidly to the London Plus is Kent. And Kent, as an educational local authority, is not by any means exceptional. And finally, just very quickly, uh, you have studied at Oxford. Um, and have uh, uh, sorry, visited uh, the Oxford Union on many occasions. Um, well, after I could, don't forget, when I started life, <laughs> women were absolutely barred. Well, well, I was going to add the point that you mentioned that women were, uh, were, were, not, were barred from being members of, uh, at, at that time. Um, so I wanted to say that you've, you've seen the Union in many iterations yes. over the years. Uh, what, what are your opinions on it? What do you think of the Oxford Union? Well, I think it's hung on amazingly. I mean, it's still a very powerful force. Um, it's, it's changed little by little. It's much more multicultural than it was. Um, it's much more multiracial than it was. It's only slowly becoming more uh, gender equal than it was. But I think it still, it still plays an amazingly powerful part in British politics. The crucial thing is that it shouldn't be the only thing that plays that very large part. But I don't underestimate its influence, which is considerable. Thank you very much. Well,